Well, this is where it starts for me. Uh, this is the slate. And this will give you an idea of, of how big the slate is. So it's, you know, almost two feet wide by 14 inches tall. So it's a relatively good surface as far as area. But if you look real close and you can see down along the bottom here where the slate chips off, I kind of draw the image based on, you know, I'll, I'll pull up some reference material and I'll draw the image based on what I can see. And uh, for instance, this is my this is my reference. So here's my reference material. Um, I just pulled up a picture of a 44 wagon here. And um, I'm trying to fill in the lines here. So I put an outline. I kind of look at this and I see, okay, everything starts to balance out. I want to get the balance of where the vehicle is on the slate. And then I start drawing. And I'm going to get you in close here to show you when I'm drawing on this slate, pieces of the slate are actually coming off. So I have to be cautious of not chipping too much away from the slate because it will be difficult to paint on. But as long as I get the image in here and you know, I'm kind of looking at some of the reflections, I'm, I'm bringing the color of the slate out. And if you notice, there's a light streak across here in the slate, it sort of feels like it should be that part of the car. So there's a line that's running that way as well. So a lot of that's the slate color. And then I do the illustration on top of it and that's where it starts. So let me get you in close here and show you what I'm working on. So if, if you are an artist and you're drawing this stuff in, remember you gotta keep that lead pretty sharp because otherwise it just disappears from there. But I'll add these lines in and hopefully not tear up too much of the, the slate because it, it'll just start chipping away from it. And if I can get the outline image of this kind of started, it'll give me some ideas of where to put the paint when I get in there. Now I know there's a rim that comes across the top of this, this windshield. When I look at some of the reference materials, there's a, there's like a, I look, look at it, it's like a visor that goes across here. I know it's not just another part of the, the top of the roof before it goes on. I've got some real challenges because this slate just breaks away here in this. But um, as much as I can, I try to get an outline on there. So you can see it, it is a, it's a tough thing to do, but once you get it on there, you'll be able to see where it is. Then you can start adding paint around it. But it sort of disappears back here in the back. So I'm hopefully gonna have all the shapes of the fender in place and, and ignoring the, uh, the breaks in the slate and hopefully just continue with the, the shapes that go back here. I also add the detail of the, the body trim because these are all guidelines for me when I start adding paint into this area that I know that I'm gonna have certain areas that I wanna highlight and certain areas that I wanna make darker. And I mean, I really am just sketching the shape of things. When it comes to the reflections and stuff, I'll add that later. I do look at my resource material and if there's some, like a highlight in here, I will kind of circle it out so that I can actually see where I wanna put a highlight. And it's kind of important to have those in place because once you get going on color, you can get lost in the surface on this. But this slate is a challenge in so many ways. Look at this one up here. You can see that this right here is a actual chip in the slate. I'm gonna have to paint through that. And um, well, I just get the assemblance of the entire vehicle, if you will. I get the kind of whole picture going here and that's what all starts. It starts from this and our next step is to start to wash some paint onto this so that we can get some areas that uh, we want it to feel like it's got some color to it. Um, I have to work on a shadow beneath this whole thing because I don't want it just floating on the canvas or the slate. I want it to actually look like it's uh, uh, supposed to be painted on this old slate. So this is how it all starts. And here we go. I'm going to jump into this and uh, I've already got the sketch on the slate here so the sketch is done now it's just a question of putting the right colors in it and as I look at this I'm not going to add any background to it I'm going to add the green the sketch that I've done here is uh, trying to give me some availability to use some of this dark hunter green and then bring the wood grains out on the side of it uh, it's gonna be a challenge on the slate but uh, let's just see how far we can get with this and uh, well, here we go. Time to get some paint. So 
So then I adjourn to my sit down studio. Once I get the sketch done and the uh, kind of the feel of it all in perspective, I can come in here and I can kind of lay it out as to where I want it to be and be a little bit more on top of the colors. And that's the car I'm looking at right there. So I kind of keep it in the foreground for myself. So I've added the green to it. I'm following all the green. Now I've got the wood grain to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my palette and I'm going to go from all the greens and blacks and whites and I'm going to go into the tans and creams that'll be on this, this woody side. So this sort of gets the gist of the car going. I got quite a few more details to kind of finalize on this and balance out. But for the most part, that's a, a lot of the base green. Now we move on to the, the wood so we can uh, actually call it a woody. All right, well, I'm changing my palette. This is an old palette, doesn't matter, the paint doesn't bleed through. So I'm adding the yellows, the browns, I've got some oranges, some blacks, and some whites. I'll be mixing them in the middle, and I'll be putting the wood grain to this vehicle. So if you see this wood grain on this vehicle here, there's a, a lot of yellows and oranges and browns in it. So I'm going to be trying to add that into here. It's a challenge because there's also light reflecting off, of, reflecting off of every surface. So I'm going to try to get the feeling that this is a panel van. And uh, well, let's see what happens with the rest of this. And here's kind of what it looks like when it's um, still a little wet, but it's kind of got the general just feel of, of uh, 1946, 47. Really, the biggest thing to know about this is, is getting the shape and, and the look of it first. The sketch is important. The final details of it, uh, as rough as this surface is, you really can't get too detailed on this. But the key thing is finding that horizon that matches like the, the rims that have the glow in them from the reflection on the horizon. And then the board, the runner board that kind of balances that out. Now, you could put backgrounds behind this, but I really think that the slate holds the background best. So this is what it looks like uh, when it gets to a stage of completion that is just about okay with me. Um, some people may want a little bit further into it, uh, but I think that uh, this is as far as it needs to go. And once again, it's 100 year old slate, very, very flaky. It does come off pretty easy. Um, there's parts where the paint starts peeling off as you're going to, if I blow on them, you'll see some of the dust blows away on it. So it's a difficult surface to work on, but it's really, uh, it brings out the vintage look in things. So I'm using acrylic paint on this. I've done oils on this before. Um, both have their challenges, but I think the acrylic, because it dries pretty quickly and I'm a very um, impatient person, <laughs> that's what I like about it. So that is the final product. Well, this is a Ford wagon. These were called Woodies because they have that wood on the side of them. And um, this is a, uh, my rendition of it on slate. Very, very tough surface to do this on, but that's what it would look like if uh, I could make my own car. I just did. I made myself 1947 Ford wagon.